In this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble the Malm high bed frame with the Leroy slats. Before we get started on the assembly, I wanted to show you something that I came up with um, that might help you as far as how you're going to position your bed frame in your bedroom. Um, I used a drawing program called Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, to create a floor plan. But you could use any drawing program, or if you don't have a drawing program, you could use uh, pencil and paper even. Uh, but to visualize where you want your bed exactly, it's, it's a very useful tool to use a drawing program. As you can see in my bedroom, I have a, the uh, entrance right here. The door opens to the inside. And then I toyed with how I was going to actually position my bed. I had it rotated the other way. But in the end, I like this, this setup because I would have plenty of space between my bed and my other furniture. I have a Calax, I have a Mickey uh, drawer unit, a Mickey computer desk, and a Cullen <coughs> chest of drawers. So here's the space where my Malm bed frame is going to go. And so now it's time to get the boxes into my bedroom and begin assembly. For the Malm high bed frame, you should have two boxes, and they're labeled box number one and box number two. You should also have the mid beam, which is a metal piece. And if you bought the bed frame set, you should also have your slats. These are the Leroy slats. Okay, so I'm opening the box, and it wasn't as graceful as I had anticipated, uh, but I guess whatever way works for you. Open your second box in a manner that's suitable to you. For me, it's like uh, most efficient to rip it open like a Christmas present. Once you've unpacked everything, you can go ahead and empty your parts bag into a box or some kind of container. Go ahead and position your headboard and your legs uh, where, the, where you think they're going to end up. So the headboard, mine is going to be against this wall. This is the front leg under the headboard and it has four large holes in it and the holes should be <clears throat> on your left side for now. And then this is the leg at the other end of the bed and it has holes on the right side. You should have the holes on the right side. So for now, just have them oriented like that for the next step. In this step, you're going to be attaching, they're not really feet, it's more like a toe, but these are the feet that go on the bottom. Whoop. They go on the bottom of the bed. <clears throat> and you're going to hammer these in. So um, make sure you have your legs oriented properly otherwise you're going to end up with the feet in the wrong place so have them oriented like in the previous step so there's three of these feet per leg a total of six you're going to have one on each end of the leg and then one in the middle of the leg on the bottom of each leg go ahead and take your headboard leg and rotate it you're going to rotate it counterclockwise so that the holes are next to the floor. Now you're going to hammer a foot into one end.
now in the middle and at the opposite end, two more feet. Now for the other leg, you're going to rotate this one clockwise. Again, the holes are going to be next to the floor. Again, it's exactly the same, identical to the first leg we just did. And you want to alternate hammering on each side because there are two nails. That way it won't go in crooked, it'll go in straight. If you alternate like that. Now for the middle. And you can judge the middle based on the uh, holes. Just line it up with the holes. Alternate. foot. So. And the next step you're going to need eight anchors and they're screw type and you're also going to need the wrench that comes in your um, in your fastener bag. With the holes facing upward you're going to lay both of your legs down flat so you can install these anchors. At one end of the leg that's opposite the headboard, you'll have five holes. You'll pick the two smallest holes, and that's where your anchor is going to screw in. I'm just going to get it started, hopefully. Snug. And watch it as it goes down so you can see when it when to go ahead and stop when it contacts and then it's symmetrical so you're going to have 
the two small holes at the other end, which are for the anchors, like so. I'll go ahead and tighten those and get them in. Here's a close-up of how this works and when you need to stop tightening. Right there. Similarly, you'll have five holes on the headboard leg and two, again, two are small, and those are your holes for your anchors. And I'm not going to show the tightening again and inserting it because you already know that. So just do the, um, these two and then the two on the opposite side as well. Okay, so I have this side in. Now I'm going to the other end. Same setup, you've got the five holes. Pick the two smallest ones for the anchors. Get them started and then go ahead and screw them in. Woo! Okay, that side's done. That was quite a workout. I, uh, I'm gonna have to recommend using a glove while using this, this uh, supplied wrench. It's uh, pretty hard on the hands. If you have gloves, use them. So in this step, we're going to fasten these side beams to the feet, sorry, to the legs of the bed. And you're gonna need the smaller of the two wooden pegs. You'll need a total of 12 of these. So three on each end of each beam. So six per beam, total of 12, the smaller one. To do this properly, I'm going to have to spread the bed's legs, like so. Go ahead and set this one up right. Let's see if there's enough room. So I'm going to show you how to orient the pieces. Um, <clears throat> The, uh, the side beams are in L shape, so you're going to want the short side on top, the long side facing down. And they're all symmetrical, they have the same holes on either end. And just to be sure you have these large holes, you want these facing inward, like so. Large holes facing inward. On the headboard leg, you can go ahead and insert your three wooden pegs. And they go in very easily. To mate the side beams to the two legs, you're going to need four of these metal discs. Actually, they look like yo-yos. Um, but these <clears throat> lock the anchor in place and you're also going to need your um, supplied Allen wrench that comes with the, uh, the the parts and the fasteners in the bag. Before you insert the discs, the metal discs, go ahead and insert the remaining wooden pegs into the two legs. So I've done the three on this side. Now I need to do the three on this side. Three. Now for the other leg. Three there. And three on the other side. Now there's a special orientation for each one of these metal discs. First of all, you need to make sure that the hexagonal hole is facing the direction so you can insert your Allen 
wrench into it. And also you'll notice there's an arrow. You see the arrow right there? That arrow needs to be pointing towards the leg. So away from the center of the side beam. It's really important to, to have that oriented properly. So I'm looking at the arrow on this metal disc and it needs to be pointed towards the end. So the arrow should be horizontal. And it goes in like so. And again with the second one. Yep. Actually, I'm going to have to raise this up to check it. There we go. Now for the other end. Test it to make sure that that's the right orientation. Look for the arrow. Line it up so it points towards the end of the side beam. Now I've done the other side as well, so I have all eight metal discs in place. Now we can make the side beam to the headboard leg on the left side. So angle it so it matches the angle of the side beam when you raise the side beam. And then go ahead and As you can see there's still a gap here at the top and along the side. Apparently you have to rotate those discs into place and lock so you can uh, close that gap. So using your Allen wrench, go ahead and rotate these clockwise. And you can see the gaps closing. Alternating so it goes in evenly, mates evenly. All right, there we go, that's secure. I'm not going to repeat the last step, but you need to do it three more times for the other three ends of the side beams. And once you've done that, you'll have your bed frame pretty much up and running, um, <clears throat> at least the outside part of the frame. So now I have the right side of the headboard leg completed. Moving on to the other leg, it's the same thing. It gets a little bit easier now. And same steps. Next up is installation of the headboard. You're going to have five wooden pegs that you'll need to use. These are the, the remaining pegs. Uh, each one of these pegs goes into five holes. They're not spaced. Um, they're spaced in a strange way, but I'll show you in a minute. Uh, we'll go ahead and insert them now. Let's see. There's one on this end. It goes into the larger holes. Then there's two together right here. One here. And then one on the corner. Next, we're going to flip the headboard so the holes face up.
For the next step, you're going to need these anchors, which are actually a screw and a bolt in one. You see the screw portion on this end and then the bolt is on this end. It's, I guess you call it a screw bolt. It's an IKEA screw bolt and you'll need the nuts that accompany those bolts and you'll also need your wrench. So you can go ahead and get your screw bolt started. They go in the smaller four holes on top here. They're evenly spaced, unlike the wooden peg holes. I'm just getting them started. Like so. screw them in. Again, you might want to use gloves to do this. This is pretty hard on the fingers. And watch it so you don't over tighten. And I'm going to do the other three. I think I see why they didn't space these wooden pegs evenly. You see, if it's if they have two here, it has to go in those two holes, so it's keyed a certain way, so you get a certain orientation. That's why they did it. So go ahead and flip your headboard over, and now you can mate it to the lower part of the frame. Be sure it's oriented properly so it, it's keyed into the, the wooden pegs properly. Alternate on each side, tap it. Go ahead and finish it into place. Like so. Go ahead and grab your nuts and install them. You're going to need your special IKEA wrench for that. So it's oriented like this. It's not a very friendly nut. Yeah, there it goes. Oh, this is tedious. Anyway, you get the idea. You gotta in this orientation you have to rotate the nut counterclockwise. And go ahead and tighten it. Alright, silly me, I neglected to read the instructions properly. There's actually these four plastic pieces that go <clears throat> between the nut and the wood. It's basically like a washer because it 
it's going to protect the wood. Now I've tightened into the wood, so that probably was not a good thing. But basically, you're going to insert this and then place tighten the nut up against the bottom of this piece here. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate it. Uh, you get the idea. But basically, those each one of these goes in, into the large hole. <clears throat> Uh, you slide it up against the bolt and then tighten your nut up against that. Uh, sorry about that. After you install the first nut, you'll have three more. And remember it's counterclockwise. That one went on pretty easily. You can spin it up in there. Minute. Yeah, I like that spinning. Oops. I like it when they spin. It's great. All right, I'm going to go ahead and tighten those. Okay, I got all four nuts in there. It's solid as a rock. All right, silly me. I neglected to read the instructions properly. There's actually these four plastic pieces that go <clears throat> between the nut and the wood. It's basically like a washer because it, it's going to protect the wood. Now, I've tightened into the wood, so that probably was not a good thing. But basically, you're going to insert this and then place tighten the nut up against the bottom of this piece here. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate it. Uh, you get the idea. But basically, those each one of these goes in, into the large hole. <clears throat> uh, you slide it up against the bolt and then tighten your nut up against that. Uh, sorry about that. I'll demonstrate one uh, fixing this mistake. So here's the, the plastic piece. It goes up and fits into the arc of the circle. Looks like this is a little bit tricky. Uh, let's see, maybe if I put the nut on first, then there we go. Wow. Yeah, that works really well. Okay. Hopefully I didn't damage my leg there. All right, so that's how that works. Then you can get it nice and tight and you won't damage the wood because it is particle board. It is brittle. Now you have to make a decision based on the thickness of your mattress. So if you have a thicker mattress um, and you don't want it as high above the frame, you're going to use this lower set of holes. If you have a thinner mattress, you can use the upper set of holes. And this is where your runners go that hold your slats. I'm going to go ahead and measure. Um, I got the Morgadol mattress, so I know how thick it is. It's 18 centimeters thick. So if I use the lower one, it's going to come up to here. It's 18. 18. If I use the higher one, lower or higher? Hmm. I think I'm going to use the higher one. I can always change it. There are three sizes of screws in your fastener bag. For this step, you're going to need the longest one right here. So you're going to need 16 of these screws, eight for each side beam, and you'll be attaching one runner to each of the side beams, and you'll need eight screws for each runner. 
The remaining four screws are for the uh, brackets that hold the mid beam. This is pretty straightforward. You want your runner oriented like this. It's an L shape. Um, you want the oval holes so they're um, on top and those line up with the holes in the side beam, like so. This is where your cordless screwdriver is gonna come in handy. I'm just gonna get it started, not all the way in. the other end. Oh, I got snagged. It's a little bit tricky. get it started. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of them in place. It's pretty straightforward. Eight on each, eight screws on each side. Because the holes are oval in this runner, it's got some play so you can move it around and get it positioned, I would say, in the center of the oval hole. And then go ahead and uh, tighten everything down. and finish the rest of them as well. And now you repeat with the other runner on the other side, the other side beam. Again, eight screws into those oval holes. Same routine. All right, moving right along. Uh, now it's time to install these two brackets. Um, here they are, you can see how they're going to be oriented like this. This is uh, with the top is, is up. And as a reminder, choose the same level of holes <laughs> that you chose for your runners on your side beams. So you can always move it if you make a mistake, but uh, choose a, the right level of holes. This looks pretty straightforward, so I'm going to get right to it. So I chose the upper level of holes. And same at the other end of the bed. Like so. Before I install the struts, I want to make sure that the, the frame is square and really I 
To do that, you need a square, a tool called a square, um, but I don't have one, so I'm going to try using my box that my LG phone came in. I mean, can we trust it to be square? I don't know. But it looks pretty good. Now it's time to install four struts. Um, they extend so you can get the proper length. And then once you have the, the length that you want, that you're, you're going to insert a screw and tighten that so that the length can't change. You're going to need 12 of the smallest screws. There's going to be three screws for each of the four struts. According to the instructions, the strut goes beneath the tab and the screw drops through the tab. And let's see if we can get this. That's not very satisfying. Looks like I'm going to have to do this manually with the screwdriver. And I think it got threaded improperly because I tried at an angle with the cordless. There we go. Like so. strut goes underneath, you drop the screw through the hole, this is a bit tricky, get it, yeah, Now for the screw in the middle. Lock it in place. I think the purpose of these struts are for nighttime romping to make sure your, your bed doesn't fly apart. Um, but now we have the one done, three more to go, all the same technique. Now it's time to insert the mid beam. Be careful when you pull it apart out of the channel. Uh, it's very sharp. You want to grab on this tab at the end of it right here and pull it out to the proper length. So the tab on each end of the mid beam will go into the slot on the bracket at each end of the bed. So, now it's time to install your slats. Uh, you want the curved side, or the, well, how do you describe it? So like if it's, it's kind of like a mountain, right? Or a hill, you want the hill top on top, facing up.
this. At each end of the mid-beam and the runners, there are two holes, and these are for uh, stoppers that will keep your slats in place, and you want to install these after you've installed your slats according to the directions. So I'm going to do that now. You'll need the remaining screws and these white stoppers. Seems pretty straightforward. Insert your screw from below and then screw in your stopper like so. And then repeat for the remaining holes. And putting the second set of slats down, you'll find that it's a very tight fit and you may have to adjust. So, and everything fits in very nicely. It's complete. Now for the Morgadol mattress.